Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a non-standard equation. Why do I call it non-standard? Because it's not completely exponential, it's not completely polynomial, but it's kind of like a mixture of both. We have a to the power x, which is exponential, and then that is multiplied by a linear function. And the result is 6, and obviously these problems can be solved by guess and check. Can they be solved algebraically? No. You can do approximations, but we're going to do the following. Since this problem is non-standard, we kind of need to uh, use a non-standard approach. Obviously, if the solutions are irrational, we can't just find them, but we're hoping that they're going to be rational. First of all, the presence of 3x kind of gives me a clue. So pretend that I don't know how to solve this. And hmm, that is interesting. Pretend to be surprised. So here's what, what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the 3x plus 2 on the right-hand side. I'm going to modify this equation. So make it an exponential equals a rational function. So you can easily change the form of an equation by division or multiplication. Now we have an exponential on the left-hand side and a rational equation on the right-hand side. All right? Great. So here's the thing. a to the power x, since a 8 is greater than 1, when you raise it to a power, you're going to get numbers that are larger than 8, right? Or well, if x is greater than 1, of course, right? But the idea is if you compare two powers of 8, like 8 to the first and 8 to the second, 8 to the second is larger. In other words, this function is increasing. This is an increasing function. Its exponential base is greater than 1, so it falls in that, into that category. The other side is a rational function, and guess what? As x increases, as x approaches infinity, this approaches 0. We're going to take a look at the limit as well. But this is a decreasing function because the denominator increases. That is a line with a positive slope. As the denominator increases, the whole function decreases. All right. So here's one thing to keep in mind. a to the power x is always greater than 0. But, but... 6 over 3x plus 2 can be negative. How? If the denominator is negative, then that's going to be the case. But let's go ahead and take a look at the limit. Limit as x approaches infinity of 6 over 3x plus 2 is 0. Because the denominator increases without bound. And guess what this gives you? Since the limit at infinity is a constant, I can set it equal to y. And guess what? This is going to give you a horizontal asymptote. If you haven't heard about asymptotes, they are lines that the graph is going to approach and approach and approach like crazy, but never touch or never cross. Most cases. Sometimes horizontal asymptotes can be crossed, but verticals never. All right. So here's what I want you to notice in addition to all of this. In addition to all of this. These two, first of all, let's talk about this real quick. We said that one of them is increasing, the other one is decreasing. What is that supposed to mean? It means that they're going to intersect at one point. So can I just try something? I can't, but before that, I want to show you the following. Let's go ahead and write the f of x. What is f of x, by the way? Let's call this f of x, and let's call the other one g of x. So one is increasing, one is decreasing. So they're going to intersect at one point. But I want to focus on the derivative of f of x. Let's go ahead and differentiate it. If you differentiate f of x, you're going to get, by the way, I want to write it as 6 times 3x plus 2 to the power negative 1. You can also use other rules for differentiation. But anyways, you can just bring down the negative 1, negative 6, and then reduce the power by 1. That's going to give you a negative 6. And guess what? This is always going to be negative. This also proves that our function f of x, the, the rational function, is always going to decrease. But, like I said earlier, they're going to intersect at a single point. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. But before we look at the graph, I would like to guess the solution. Guesswork. Yeah, he's only doing guesswork. He doesn't know how to solve problems. Maybe he doesn't. Okay, anyways. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to the original form. And remember what I told you earlier. 3x kind of gives me an idea. Hmm, maybe, 
the presence of 3x maybe means that I can use a fraction that has a 3 at the bottom, like 1 third, 2 thirds, 4 thirds, obviously not 3 thirds because that's going to be 1. And obviously you can plug in 1, you're going to notice that it doesn't work. So here's the thing. If I'm looking for rational solutions, you know, this is probably going to be an integer. So I want to try, I want to test 1 third. If x is equal to 1 third, I get 8 to the power 1 third multiplied by 3 times 1 third plus 2. That is going to be 2 times 3, and that is equal to 6. Yay! We got the answer first try. Well, that was easy. But if you tried x equals 2 thirds, you would notice that it's not going to work. And we already know that there is only one solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph now, and we'll just wrap it up. Uh, great. So here's the graph of both of these functions. I graphed it together, and you can see here clearly that the intersection point, well, it's not super clear, but it's not marked, but you can tell, hopefully, that the intersection point, the x-axis, is going to be one-third, and you can see that here, x equals one-third is the only solution to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.